two eyes of stag, three wings of bat, one very large spider, splash of bleach, and a cup of what I'm pretty sure is water. Stop. Are you seriously going to add something you think is water to a potion? I'm like 95% sure, so yeah. Plus, there's already a ton of other ingredients in here, and it's less about the proportions, more about the thoughts and feelings I put in, so it's fine. No, still no. I'm worried about you, not whatever it is you're making. I think we need to review why you shouldn't be mixing random chemicals, whether in a cauldron or in a beaker. Hi, my name is Susanna Harris, and this is the Science of Lab Safety, brought to you by Lab Safety Specialists. We might already know that there are certain rules we need to follow while working in a science laboratory, but we might not know exactly why those rules matter, other than to avoid getting into trouble. So let's take a look at the exciting, the unexpected, and even the spooky facts behind the Science of Lab Safety. Okay, science lady, give me your lesson, and then let me get on with it. I still have to make my costume for this year. Based on the fact that you're mixing potentially unknown chemicals, and you're also already a witch, that should be the least of your worries. But yeah, let's go ahead and talk about it, specifically why what you're doing right now is bad and why this whole close enough thing really doesn't cut it for chemicals. First of all, bleach is some pretty nasty stuff in terms of danger to human health. Generally, liquid bleach is a dilute 1 to 10 solution of sodium hypochlorite. This chemical is very unstable in solution, which causes it to release chlorine, which is the active principle of the bleach. On its own, these bleach-based solutions are strong enough to remove stains and kill microbes and even corrode metals. As you might expect, this can do a bunch of damage to your body, especially if it makes contact with mucous membranes or becomes ingested. And that's just bleach on its own. Go on. Sodium hypochlorite is known for its reactability with other chemicals. The most infamous of these reactions is with the chemical ammonia. Ammonia is an acid while sodium hypochlorite is a fairly weak base. When the two meet, toxic chlorine gas is released, which has been used as a chemical warfare agent and can kill you at high enough doses. Even if these vapors don't kill you, you probably won't like the side effects. Coughing, sneezing, shortness of breath, nausea, even pneumonia. Okay, but I'm fairly sure I've never bought anything called ammonia. All of this is just from my cottage. Like sodium hypochlorite, ammonia can be found in a lot of household cleaners and products. Glass and window cleaners, interior, exterior paints. Oh, and also urine. Okay, well, regardless, how would one stay safe? I am so glad you asked. To stay safe while using dangerous chemicals, here are some basic rules. First, always know what chemicals you are dealing with. The easiest way to do this is to carefully label all of your containers as you fill them and make sure that everything has a list of potential hazards. Number two, you need to know your concentration of your chemicals. Even household chemicals vary in their concentration. Read all the warnings about adverse reactions. These may be listed on the chemicals packaging. When in doubt, you can do a quick web search or check your laboratory's MSDS, Material Safety Data Sheets, for guidance. Speaking of precautions, always be sure to wear the proper personal protective equipment and work somewhere where any spills, fumes, or unexpected accidents can be dealt with. Super, really scary, definitely fits the whole aesthetic, thanks. Just trying to make sure you stay safe enough that you can go trick-or-treating next year. Happy, Happy Halloween! Halloween.